Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of Rackend, and welcome to the Cloud 2030 Summit. Uh, this is a case where we spent four hours discussing topics that we've been coming back to over and over again in our weekly sessions and are going to keep coming back to in our follow-up sessions. So enjoy the whole summit. Um, we've broken it down and then set it into podcasts so you can listen to the conversations at your leisure. This one session, the first one, is where the players introduce themselves. And we have a great group of people participating, really giving interesting thoughts and dialogues from different perspectives. And I want you to be able to use this session to hear where they're coming from and also put faces and names to voices. Because in the podcast, you obviously you don't get that aspect of it. So this video should be really helpful for you to, to sort of hear where people have been thinking about, what they want to get out of the sessions, and then who they are because that's important in uh, understanding their perspectives and, and where they're coming from. Uh, we're going to do all these sessions um, as individual sessions so you can listen to them in small bites. And then at the end, we have people give a little bit of wrap up. So you'll hear these same voices again come back and tell you what they've learned or what they've thought about. Uh, enjoy the summit all together. It's an amazing thing. And then please come into the 2030.cloud sessions because uh, we keep talking about these things. We're, we're going deeper into how to change and, and what the dynamics are that, that create the environment uh, that's shaping our future and if there are ways to change it. Looking forward to talking to you. Thanks. I, I can start if we want to get it, get it rolling. So uh, I'm Rob Hirschfeld. Um, the, I'm, I'm here and my motivation on the whole 2030 thing is Frankly, I'm a little worried about some of the directions I see things are going. Um, and so I, I'm asking myself those questions. Um, and, but I also think that if we, we're not intentional about what it's, what it's doing, we can't figure out where, where the opportunities are. So I, I don't wanna, I wanna, I wanna figure out, you know, sort of where things are going and how we, how we can contribute to being part of it from that perspective. So that's me sort of general. Um, so uh, my name is, uh, is, is Don Malero. I'm with a company called WWT. Um, we're a large privately held systems integrator, um, have a, sort of a global footprint, but are based in all places, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, uh, I'm going to be the anti-Rob. Um, uh, I'm actually incredibly optimistic about the future. I think there is I think we are on the precipice right now of some very fundamental changes in how computing gets done. Uh, and uh, I think it's gonna, the next 10 years is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be, funda it's gonna be from a fundamentally interesting and, and most importantly for me, uh, entertaining time to be, uh, to be part of the industry. I share those feelings too. Not entirely hey. negative. <laughs> hey, I'll be negative. <laughs> hey, this is Larry. Hey, can you guys hear me okay? Awesome. Larry Smith. Um, I'm with Aspect Core Services, uh, CTO. Um, I'm kind of with Rob. Um, it, maybe not so much. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, there's a lot of things that we see in the industry that, that, uh, and it could be part of like, what is it, Don? Like you were saying, it's kind of, maybe it is part of the transition to the next phase, um, but there's a lot of bad practices that, that seem to be coming along with that and hopefully they'll shake out. So that's why I'm here. Are we going around and doing uh, our introductions and how, how we look at the next? Yeah. And why you're here. Why are you here, Mr. Townsend? I'm here because Rob invited, invited me. And if, if Rob invited me, it's probably a good time. So <laughs> that, that's good enough for me. And I'll, I'll be your the residence Kubernetes champion that I've there all cool. <laughs> <laughs> to eat. How Kubernetes is going to solve all our problems. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let me put my hood on so I can be the hoodie in the team. On this <laughs> you going there. Do we have to have a list of prohibited words? Uh, <laughs> No, but uh, uh, I'm with the CTO advisor, uh, 
So I'm a big fan of hybrid infrastructure. So I kind of straddle the two different worlds. Uh, I love the stuff that Rob and his team is doing because I think that stuff is going to be needed to automate and reduce the workload of enterprise IT teams that's going to see, you know, this legacy hardware and infrastructure in their environments, whether it's uh, colo, private data centers, et cetera, that world is just going to go on forever. We need to lighten that load and we need to figure out how we're going to adopt the, the public cloud in all its forms uh, with these applications and data sets. So that's kind of the basis of my practice and my lens. So over the next 10 years, 2030, in 10 years, we're going to still be figuring out how to uh, automate the deployment of new SAP HANA, I mean, in new SAP environments. How, how does that work with the public cloud? Hello, my name is uh, Keith Reddick. I'm with Aspect Core Services. I'm the contrarian to all of this. Um, my biggest fear um, is not only the inequity around the adoption of technology and who we're leaving out, but I'm also mindful of some of the things we're seeing with Google and their AI team, what we're seeing in the news, how, how as technologists, do we have, and this is one of the things I'm looking to, to, to answer today is as technologists and with the future coming in and of, of great learning and in, 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 in R&D and innovation, do we have a responsibility to think about the consequences of this? In other words, have we gotten to a point where we've gone over blinders and saying we're creating for creating sake and we get excited about it and we all think, oh, this is great, we're, we're pushing the envelope, but are we thinking about the consequences of pushing the envelope? I'd like to see that um, talk about today. My, I'm Lawrence Hecht. I write and analyze things that I'm here to um, get an idea about what I should write and analyze in the next 12 months. I'll go next. Sean Roberts, Lincoln Network, CT. Um, uh, I've done a lot of things. Um, can you all hear me? Yep, yeah, looks, looks yes. Uh, so uh, engineer, um, I've written some, I uh, started a podcast with my company. Uh, I'm here basically to reconnect with the cloud community. I've been doing a lot of policy work over the last couple of years um, and uh, to do more engineering. And yes, I do think automation solves all problems. I'm happy to go next. Hey, Sean, it's been a few years. Um, <laughs> Cheers. Lovely to see you. I have been following your work while your organizations work. Um, real quick, um, an SI now, uh, an SI company now, but have been in the cloud infrastructure space. And by infrastructure, I don't mean just network storage compute. Go higher up to the application tier as well. Database, we consider that a part of the infrastructure too. Um, for the last, gosh, 20 plus years, always been driven by the classic, classic, even though I'm a scientist engineer, I've been driven by the Pareto principle that yes, there are um, you know, large monopolistic players. Now they might be the public clouds, but because the market spend is growing, the IT use cases are growing, the computing use cases are growing, there's enough that they leave on the table where there is massive room for innovation. That's where we are coming in. Um, again, it's not that AWS is stupid or Google is stupid, that they're not doing certain things. It's just, it doesn't make good business sense for them right now. But that is Greenfield opportunity for the rest of us. Um, so yes, we can shape what the next decade is as we have been in lots of cases. So it ends up being a friction between the major, major players and the ones that are trying to shape uh, for non perhaps business reasons, what the cloud would look like perhaps or computing in general would look like. I'll go next. I'm Rich Miller. I run a small consultancy in Palo Alto. I'm here because I've been here for 
a number of decades, and I've been lucky enough to be in a couple of the right places at the right times and a couple of the wrong places at the right times. I have a long-standing interest and love of distributed, distributed compute, distributed data, and the the forces that change our industry have a tendency to work in cycles. They go through a variety of phases and waves that I enjoy watching as a participant and as an observer. And I find myself now very, very much attracted to the impacts of the economics of data and the distribution of both data and compute in a modern distributed networked meshed economy and ecology. That was beautiful. I'm Andrea Kelmans and I work with a bunch of tech startups and I love fun trends. I'll go. Uh, I'm Mike Maney. I help companies find and tell better stories. Um, the companies I work with are primarily infrastructure and plumbing companies. Uh, I work with Linode, uh, Rackend, Big Leaf. I've spent some time at IBM running global comms for their advanced internet and pervasive computing division. Uh, the guy in the name of John Patrick, I was his PR person for a while, as well as Alcatel Lucent, where I had uh, communications for their API management efforts. And I apologize for that to everybody. Um, I also launched uh, Plan 9 with uh, this developer hack, some guy named Dennis Ritchie, uh, who some of you may know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I go back uh, with the Bell Labs, Bell Labs team there. Most of my peers like the Silicon Valley stuff. I appropriately enough like the unsexy side of this business. Uh, it fits me really well. <laughs> Uh, and I'm here because I believe the best stories aren't boring product stories, but ones that help us understand and shape the future of the industry. And I like being around smart people. Uh, it helps me make all of the other companies around you um, that much better. Okay. I'm uh, Rocky Grober or Rochelle Grober. Uh, I'm out in Silicon Valley too, but I hail from St. Louis. Hey, Dan, Don, um, I, and Sean, and I, uh, I am an engineer, both process and, uh, and by nature, I love big iron, but I also love uh, the, the one to many, many to one, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, just been doing all sorts of uh, startups to big companies since I've been out here for over 30 years. And uh, this, is, this group is just fun. It gets my, my mind flowing. Uh, and maybe I'll find a job while I'm here. But <laughs> more importantly, I really love the discourse and uh, finding the patterns discussing them and uh, seeing if we can catch our mistakes before they get really too big. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and go. Uh, Mark Teeley, uh, long history in the IT infrastructure space, um, working for companies like HP and VMware and Gilead, Brocade and a few others. Um, a little bit of an odd duck in the industry in the sense that uh, um, I um, am annoying people in three or four different major areas of technology, including um, data center, infrastructure, um, cloud, and edge, and um, have been a long, <clears throat> long proponent of participating in the industry. Uh, I love having my um, assumptions challenged, which uh, I regularly uh, have pushed on me on Twitter and on LinkedIn, usually because I ask for it. And um, I'm a, a participant and have been a participant in, in many of the groups that we all know and love or hate, depending on 
on what time we talk about them, groups like CNCF and uh, the Green Grid and um, uh, Inter International Data Center Authority and, um, and at one point had my own organization called Data Center Pulse uh, that was meant to help provide a voice to the data center end user. In, uh, in other words, the group of people that, that work in or on their company's data centers. And most recently I've, um, meaning over the last five years and certainly in the last year and a half, have been focused uh, heavily on edge, uh, including starting my own company uh, called Edgevana. And our focus is, um, is effectively helping make global infrastructure more easily composable and accessible to um, global customers. And I'm here because there are a lot of smart people on this panel, um, you know, not including John Cohen and Rob Hirschfeld and Rich Miller, but the rest of you, pretty smart people. And I appreciate uh, the chance to learn. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, Mark. <laughs> I don't. I was going to say, I'm, there, Rob? <laughs> I was going to say, I feel offended. I think I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I am not one as, of them. I'm here as note taker. I'm I'm, I'm learning. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't mind uh, saying it's it's what it's 21 people on here so far, and I'm pretty sure that 20 of you are pretty much smarter than me. So, you know what? I'm fine with that. I think that's my cue to talk about how I'm not one of those 21 people. <laughs> oh, with my video. Um, hi, I'm Mike. I've been doing sysadmin and DevOps for like 20 years now. Um, which is probably less than a lot of people on this call. Um, I was the DevOps lead at a company, a small company. Um, and uh, I've been at the same place for 10 years, a little more than 10 years now. And I'm looking to branch out and understand more about the community. And specifically here, get a more brainy view of the community. A lot less of, you know, nuts and bolts and in installing the K word um, and more of understanding the community and what's going on. Awesome. Well, well Mike, uh, to, to make you feel better, uh, I'm, I'm a bit junior uh, of, of yours in, in terms of uh, uh, time spent in the sysadmin field. Uh, it's been now a little bit over 10 years for me um, before that I was in academia. Uh, so, but yeah, just just like you, I, I am in the sysadmin slash DevOps world. Um, currently, uh, I work with a company that um, does a uh, does development on blockchain products. Uh, so uh, I see myself as a consumer of uh, cloud resources, um, and uh, and I'm personally also interested in like the aspects of automation uh, as well as the uh, social political implications of cloud centralization. I'll go. Um, my name is Gina Rosenthal. I have been in the operations side of the world for my entire career, so a little over 20 years, um, and have worked at really big um, infrastructure companies, EMC, Dell, VMware, a couple of little ones like Ink Tank, um, and have also been a sysadmin at Harvard, um, the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory, where I did rocket science, that was pretty cool, and also at a pharma. Um, very interested in all of the things everyone's talked about from a from a infrastructure perspective, but I'm more interested, at, like um, Klaus just said, in um, storage in, in the how this affects people. The way I came to have a career. Um, was my brother told me, um, I was a poor single mom in Northwest Florida, and my brother told me I could quit a job. And I was doing about three jobs at the same time and still not making enough money to get by. And um, the, the government would pay me to go to school. And he was right. So I got my um, EET at community college and I transferred to Florida State and did information studies. Um, while I was there, I founded the American St Indian Student Union at, you think about who the mascot is at Florida State everything revolves to me around information. And I think as we see things going on now, how do stories get told? Who gets to hold the information? How does this all go together? And when we move away from books, which were kept in places, and I can speak to this being growing up very poor, we're kept in places that not everybody can access them and read them and get the information or have the time to do that. All of a sudden now everything is digitized. So 
who gets to say what's what? And does the, the person with, you know, is, is the algorithms, if I get the best algorithm, if I'm able to game the system and get my word out there louder, can I flood the system with misinformation? So I am more interested in what we're building that it serves humanity and does not um, make it super easy to be uh, manipulated by people who would want to enslave humanity. Very cool. So I realize yeah, some people might not well, have been able to introduce. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. I'm John Cowan. I'm a uh, career long early stage software entrepreneur um, student and practitioner of market and product disruption. I am keenly interested in the future of cloud because I believe that the internet of things is going to dwarf everything that came before it, including the original, the OG uh, cloud computing model. Um, and I'm keen to get everybody's thoughts, feedback, perspectives, opinions, and um, ideas around the concept. I hope you enjoyed this session uh, of intros. This is a good chance to sort of get to know the players before we dive into our next session, which is fascinating. It was about security. Uh, we chose security first because the SolarWinds hack had just happened and it was top of mind for everybody. So we wanted to sort of put that on the table uh, and think about, you know, can we secure 2030? And that is our next topic. So enjoy. I'm looking forward to your thoughts.